So once inclusion and exclusion criteria are established for a trial, it's so important at that point when a trial is initiated that you find, I mean, I don't wanna say the perfect candidate because there, there may not be a perfect candidate, but you really want to get as perfect a candidate as possible. And it's heartbreaking because we come to know families, we engage in the community, we have faces, you know, that with all the names, um, but there's, uh, you know, th there's something to be said for if these first and earliest trial participants are the right fit for the way the trial is designed, and you can show benefit and minimal to no risk early on you can have sometimes more rapid progress in drug development. And so there is, you know, sort of this, this belief that if we can get it right from the earliest stages, we can in fact accelerate. And there really is not wiggle room on, you know, as much as we want to put a few outliers into the study because we don't want to say no, because we know what will happen if we say no, you are trying to produce results that will ultimately accelerate an approved treatment for the entire community. And in rare disease research, when you start to prioritize one over all, you really get into trouble quickly. And I've seen it, I've been a part of situations like that. Um, and I know when you're the one, that's not what you want to hear. But the reality is you are trying to do what's best for all as quickly, as safely, um, as, as appropriately as possible. And so that focus on the greater good, that has to be the underlying ethical principle over trying to help each individual that we come to know.